what's up this is a quick guide for how to remove dropped frames from your footage so if you look right here i move forward i move forward again i move forward again and nothing changes on the 626th frame because it's a drop frame and i want the program to detect it's a drop frame and immediately replace it with an interpolated frame first of all we need a difference gear and we are just going to compare the previous frame to the current frame and ask ourselves whether it's the same or not I will use a scale node right here to make this a bit more efficient because my computer is kind of old. Move this way down, put this in here, you can see it's way scaled down. Put this in the time speed and the time speed needs to be offset by 1. You'd think it would be minus 1 but for whatever reason it's actually 1. We take this, we put it in the background and we take this and put it in the foreground. Now I took the difference gear and I dragged it in here just to check to be sure that it shows up and I go back again and you can see it's not keying out. And again, on our other dropped frame, which is here, this also keys out. Now this composition is a bit flaky, so I will tell you how to do this without your fusion composition crashing 50 times like it did for me. And we need two pipelines right now, one for even frames and one for uneven frames, so that we have interpolated frames to layer over our footage instead of the duplicated frame. Okay, let's start with the pipeline for even numbers. Now we have two time speed nodes and an optical flow node, because we want to use optical flow for our interpolation. We set this to optical flow, we say the slowest on top because our car is barely moving and the background is moving quickly. Now we just change this to 2 times speed and change it back to 0.5 speed. Now every second frame will be interpolated. In fact, all the uneven frames will be interpolated because this iterates over all the even frames. Okay, now we just copy this, only the last two, and we need a time stretcher. You can probably do this with a time speed node, but I find this a bit more intuitive. Now what this does, it multiplies your time by two, meaning first of all, it moves over all of your frames, just like a time speed node would. Then it multiplies it by two, meaning it's playing twice as fast. And it offsets it by one, meaning it iterates over all the uneven frames, meaning all the even frames will be interpolated. This will be the same, but we need to add one to remove the one that we added in here. For some reason, this is how it works out. This has to be positive. And now we change this one. Yeah, this one is already on optical flow and we can change this one to nearest and this one to nearest as well which might be a bit more efficient. So now what we need is we need something that tells it if something is keyed out right here and it's an even frame, put this one in. And if it's keyed out and it's an uneven frame, put this one in. And if nothing is keyed out right here or it's pretty much not keyed out, then don't put either of these in, but use the original source footage. So we need two merge nodes for this. And I will do most of this stuff in this one. We go into the settings page, we edit controls. We need two new controls right here. The first one is called probe. It's a number, it's in common. 0 to 1, 0 to 1, slider control, okay, probe is down here. We add another one, which is a number again, which is in common again, 0 to 1 and 0 to 1, and it's a slider control again, it, it doesn't matter that much, but there you go. Now we will use a probe modifier, and this probe modifier needs the difference here because this is what it's intended to probe, and it will look at the rectangle right here of the whole screen, and it will tell me what the average value is because that's what I have selected right here. And if I go back now in here, you can see that this has a low value. And if I go off my duplicated frame, this now has a higher value. So this tells me now whether I have a duplicated frame or not. And this is what I will use later. But first we need something that tells this, that this always needs to be zero on the uneven frames. And this one always needs to be zero on all the even frames. Okay, so let's add an expression in here. Okay, so this if statement basically just divides the frame number, which is time divided by two. And then it says, is there a remainder or not? If there is no remainder, then it's an even number and it puts out one. We will replace this one in a second. And now we just do the exact same thing right here. Now we have the same thing in our other merge node, but obviously we want this to be the other way around. So we change this to zero and we change this to one. So now if it's not an even frame, then this would be one. And if it's an even frame, which is right now, then it will be zero. So if I switch back and forth here, you can see that this iterates between one and zero. And this one will be zero when this one is one. Okay, so we have this part, and now we need to do the part that makes your fusion composition crash potentially. So let's first do all the other parts. You can go in here and you can put this up here. And on the even frames, there should be an interpolated frame, which you usually recognize because of these small artifacts right here. If you get these, what you can do, you can say clamp edges and clamp edges, and then it's gone. Uh, this stretches your edges a little bit, but uh, that's usually not noticeable. If I take this one, the timer will look normal. And if I go back one, you can see it's interpolated. So this gives me all the uneven frames, which is what we all know. 
So we connect this to the uneven frames, we connect this to the even frames, and now we do our last step, which again can crash our composition. And the reason this crashes our composition is because we have a variable right here with a probe modifier on it. And if we address this probe modifier in any way for my computer, my, my composition can crash, but only if I move my playhead. So I will move to the duplicated frame first. And now basically all we need is a quick statement that says if this is a low value, set this to one. And if this is a higher value, set this to zero. So now we have this set up and now we can address this in here. You could have probably written this a bit more efficiently, but um, right now it's working. So I don't want to mess with this since my fusion composition literally crashed like 50 times. Now we go in here and now this one, you need to change the one again to merge four or whatever your word merge is named, obviously. And now we named this export one. Now we press enter. And now this should be working, but again, I don't get to verify this right now in here. I have to go to the edit page first, because if I move my playhead in Fusion, it crashes. But if I now go back, you can see this is no longer interpolated, the timer's not weird. And I go back again, and this is also a duplicated frame, so you can see that this is interpolating again. But on most frames, it will look completely normal, only the duplicated frames will be interpolated. So this is working, so now we can go in here. We need to wait a little bit, sometimes this crashes too, but if I wait a little bit... Oh no, I've crashed. Okay. So usually what you could do is you could add a mask as well if you wanted to mask something out that causes a bit of artifact like around these transparent hard elements usually is a good idea the timer moves so fast you don't notice so it doesn't matter um yeah so this is the guide i don't know maybe somebody needs it and i hope i could save somebody like 50 crashes or so but maybe it's just my computer my hardware is a bit old as i said i don't know if i said it yet it's been like the third time i recorded this okay see ya